Hey guys, what's happening? So let's hop into Justice League No Justice. And I wanted to do this one a little bit sooner as far as doing a playlist talking about the series, but I'm kind of glad I didn't. And that's not for any lack of interest. It's quite the opposite. And my reasoning for that is one, because it's a four part series. But my second reason is because this four part series, we've gotten a lot quicker than the six part series of Dark Knight's Metal. And because we got these four issues a lot quicker, just in comparison, for that reason, I wanted to see how this series closed before I dove into the second part of the Dark Side Next Level video. And for you guys that have already seen that video or for anybody who's currently reading Wonder Woman and a number of the other series that are going on now in DC Rebirth, you'll also notice a few of the mysterious plugs that kind of point to this four issue event. And I'll talk about those as I cover what happened in this four part series. But for anybody who's completely new to comics or just new to DC Comics and you just want to hop into Justice League No Justice, I highly recommend that you start with Dark Knight's Metal because that way it's a six part series that gets you caught up which is good enough to get you ready for no justice but i wouldn't be able to sleep at night if i didn't recommend that you read like the dozen one shots i forget how many there are off the top of my head exactly but it's close to a dozen between dark days dark nights and the individual nightmare batman origins so definitely check those out and i'll leave you guys a link in the description so you can check out my playlist that pulls from a number of topics throughout dark knight's metal including the additional tie-ins that break down certain components that haven't been fully revealed yet but after watching those you'll be all caught up and you'll definitely see some extra connections that weren't necessarily spelled out in the main series and so with that said at the conclusion of dark knight's metal when the justice league used 10th metal to cast the dark god out and move the earth back up to its rightful place because of that they more or less broke the universe because 10th metal didn't have a warning label on it like it didn't say on the side for ages 10,000 and up but this power was so insane this 10th metal it expelled so much energy that it reached out to the end of the multiverse and not only to the point of reaching the source wall but breaking it allowing an infinite number of possibilities to pass through into the known dc universe which we got a quick glimpse of at the conclusion of metal when we saw not only the break in the source wall but also a hand reach through and it's right at that point where justice league no justice really picks up and it pretty much starts with the guardians pulling together every green lantern you could imagine and for hal jordan he's really given a rough time here because imagine at your job that you mess something up and the whole company has to come and fix it. You just gonna be sitting there looking like it ain't that bad. I mean, look at it. It ain't the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> but in this case, it actually is. Because Guy Gardner and Jon Stewart are letting him know the little that we do know about the other side. Whatever's out there is toxic. We send things through and they disintegrate. Like, this is the source wall. Like, we have nothing bigger to block that out if we can't close this. But while the lanterns are here, back on Earth, Brainiac is invading and showing the Justice League, and really all the people of Earth, what little power that they have, and not just defense for the Earth, but in defense for the universe, against what's to come. Because up until this point, the entire DC multiverse had just been this this entity in this fishbowl but as a result of the events of dark knight's metal this fishbowl just got poured into the ocean which is a wild thing to try to wrap your head around especially with dc going into so much detail with so many of the different planets and the stories that we witnessed take place on a number of those planets it's crazy but then in the middle of Brainiac's speech, <laughs> Superman comes through straight world star style, attacking Brainiac more so in defense of the other members of the Justice League because Superman doesn't really know what exactly is going on just yet. But not after long with Brainiac subduing Superman and showing him how easy it was to take down everybody else and really just starting to give Superman here an idea of if I could beat you this easily, then you have absolutely no chance of defending yourself against what's to come. And for that reason, Brainiac who's really figured out the best probability for everyone to combat this threat because he's able to take a number of variables in this case characters and run the numbers in his head of which will be the most effective together for this situation but initially reading it it really doesn't look that way and we really don't get an understanding initially why he specifically put these certain members together but it is something that we learn more about throughout the course of the series and with everybody here on Brainiac's ship, like this mixture of different characters, Brainiac has modified their costumes, but at this point, only a handful of the Justice League members know why. But what I like that we see here, and I'm not sure how many of you guys caught it, but in my opinion, in making a good story great, it's the little things that we see around this time that they're on Brainiac's ship that point back to Dark Knight's Metal. 
like Damien's interaction with Dr. Fate here, it feels like the phase two of his interaction with Dr. Fate in the Riddler's Labyrinth. Because if you guys remember, around the time that this Robin killed Dark Robin, the one from the Dark Multiverse, shortly after that, Dr. Fate made a decision that strongly contradicted Damien's morals. And that was the decision to take him and Green Arrow, and I don't remember where Mr. Terrific went to, but to leave everyone else behind who had got captured. And when they're talking here, you can feel that residual tension from that conversation because Damien's like, I'm not gonna wait for you to find Brainiac. I'm going to take action now because that's what my father would do. And as soon as he turns around, everybody's right there. But when this happens, Brainiac pretty much explains that he didn't have the time to ask nicely. So by confronting them in the form of an invasion, it was his way of proving to them what he was saying while he was saying it. And we know this is a fact because the lasso of truth proved that he wasn't lying. And I'm sure he already did this earlier to prove to Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, everyone else. But he does it again here to erase any doubt from anyone who hasn't seen yet. And another reason this is very necessary is because right after that, Batman tells Brainiac to explain to everyone else what you told us. And it's here where Brainiac tells everyone one of the oldest, quote, myths, end quote, in the universe. And that is the myth of the Omega Titans, which seems to be pretty real at this point. And what's crazy about it is that these Omega Titans, they're four brothers, entropy, wisdom, wonder, and mystery. And as Brainiac explains this, he really has like his, uh, the collector moment right here like from Guardians of the Galaxy 1. But the way that he explains it, each of these brothers believe that their core energy is the dominant power of intelligent life. But in order for the brothers to prove which core energy was the most dominant, they planted seeds of cosmic energy on different worlds, and at the end of the universe, whichever one grew the most, that brother would win that prize and reabsorb his energy. And it was the destruction of the Source Wall which released these Omega Titans back in Dark Knight's Metal. But I do gotta point out that these Omega Titans, they look very similar to some shadowy figures that we saw back in recent issues of Wonder Woman. And I talked a bit about this in the previous Dark Side video. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, this is one of the main reasons I held off doing a video for No Justice. And that's because Wonder Woman's twin brother Jason, who she's recently reunited with, he disappeared and then just all of a sudden reappeared with this crazy armor. And he doesn't remember exactly what happened when he disappeared, but as he recalls it, he was brought before these giants. And there's like four crazy tall ones and then one that's not as tall, but they abducted Jason to this mysterious place, gave him his armor, and then just let him go. And now my first thought is that these were the Omega Titans, or at least them and then a fifth figure. But when I went back to the epilogue of Dark Knight's Metal, I also noticed that this similar scene from Wonder Woman was in a different spot with the single man standing before these figures, and that this different set of figures resembled them much more. And that's something I'll talk about more in part two of the Dark Side Next Level video. But I bring them up because I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the connection manifest early in the new Justice League series. But not too long after explaining the Omega Titans to everyone, the Omega Titans arrive at Brainiac's home planet, Kalu. And when he shows them this and Clark's like, oh my god, and Brainiac's like, these aren't gods, these are destroyers. When this happens, it's almost like you get that feeling of Brainiac saying this to Superman in a way where it's like, if anyone understands this on a personal level, I know you do. But immediately they had to take action, so Brainiac split them up into four teams, modeling each team after the energy of one of the Omega Titans. And that's how we got the different teams. We had Team Entropy, they had like Batman, Luther, Deathstroke, you also had Team Wonder, which had Wonder Woman, of course. Like, not putting her on this team would have been a wasted opportunity. But they also got Dr. Fate, Etrick and the Demon, and you also got Team Wisdom, who also gives us another call back to Dark Knight's Metal. Because much like I mentioned what the conversation between Damien and Dr. Fate reminded me of from the Riddler's Labyrinth, like when everyone gets paired up in the teams, Damien's looking at Harley Quinn like, I'm not working with this monster. But it's here that she reminds him that he left her in the rest for dead. And he has no response to that. Even though in that situation, Situation, he really didn't have a choice because much more than their lives was at stake but nonetheless it is crazy when you meet somebody who you left for dead it's like how does that conversation go like hey how you been you look good what you been doing breathing yeah it looks good on you I don't know, but I could just imagine having to see them again and then having to work with them. That has to be an even greater challenge. And for the last team, we also have Mystery. And it's really like your teams are led by the Trinity plus Flash. And really going forward, it has me excited to see what the character interactions are gonna be for each one of these teams, because they're all composed in seemingly a very unconventional way, which is the best thing about it. Because with each team, you're bringing characters together who don't normally react to one another on a regular basis. But that doesn't negate 
negate the fact that many of them still have history with one another, which is going to be very interesting to see play out. But speaking of history, more specifically Justice League vs Suicide Squad, and I don't believe I did a video on that event, but we did talk about Amanda Waller and her plans for building Task Force 11. And I want to say we talked about it around the time that Grail was being pursued by the Suicide Squad when she was trying to protect her father Darkseid, who was a baby at the time. And I also want to say we got another reference in the first couple issues of Damage, but really what all of that points back to is Justice League vs Suicide Squad when Amanda Waller tells Maxwell Lore, who thinks she's recruiting him for Task Force X, she then tells him that his talents would have been wasted there. And it was back then that she told Maxwell Lord that instead she would be using him for Task Force 11, which at this point she's given the task of hacking Brainiac, and she really couldn't have picked the worst time. But for her, with all these world ending events, and every time there's a new threat, her and the US government are left in the dark, because of that she goes to the extreme and she's like, I need to get some answers. And she pushes Brainiac's brain to get through, he pushes back, and his brain literally explodes trying to fight her back, leaving all these teams to fight the Omega Titans on their own on Kalu. Like had Amanda Waller waited just a little bit longer, or just been more aware, then Brainiac would have still been there to help the other teams on Kalu fighting off the Omega Titans. Because after getting there, they didn't know the entire plan of Brainiac. He started to explain it, but he was never able to finish. And because of that, at the point where they're fighting off the Titans, they were still trying to figure a lot of things out and they just ran out of time. The planet was consumed and they had to get out of there. And even though it was a failed attempt at saving the planet, they did give a number of people enough time to evacuate before it was destroyed. And from here, just really figuring out what everybody was gonna do, because now Earth was the Omega Titans' next target. When they turned to Brainiac 2.0, not for just help to stop them, but also help to get to Earth faster, he refused to help because he just felt like the Justice League had brought this upon themselves. And to me, it's one thing if you feel that way, but he also went through the trouble of going to Earth to speed up the process of this happening. Not cool, 2.0, not cool. But this also brings a number of people together, because with Amanda Waller, who had found out about a different seeds on Earth, her plan was just I'm gonna blow them all up and a lot of people gonna die but it's better than everybody getting killed and that's what brings Green Arrow to Amanda Waller and she would have him to believe or at least the way she sees it everybody who went up to Brainiac's ship they're dead like Brainiac coming to earth and putting little teens together like that's not like that's the last thought floating around in her mind but as far as these two going back and forth on whether to destroy these trees they also have the conflict of dealing with Brainiac 2.0 who's trying to speed up the process but as far as Green Arrow going after Amanda Waller here he's by himself mainly because everyone else is thrown in stasis, which was a fail safe by Brainiac, but that's mainly why Green Arrow is by himself. But with Brainiac 2.0 now in the picture, trying to speed everything up, it's giving the Justice League even less time to get back. But fortunate enough, the Lanterns return, and this ends up buying them back a little more time. And when the four teams get there, they come to the solution of creating a seed that had energy from the different Omega Titans, and they would use this seed, place it in one of the Omega Titans, where it would grow exponentially, and because of that, the other three Titans, whose energy is also a part of this seed, they wouldn't be able to resist the urge, and they would just consume the other. And the original plan was for Green Lanterns just to shoot this into the Titan Entropy, but Green Arrow was like, come on, man, we got one shot. Come on, you know better. And because of that, he changed from a pistol to like a crossbow so Green Arrow could take that one shot. Because one shot's all they had, and it works. He hits Entropy, and the other Omega Titans just kind of hauntingly turn and look at Entropy and just eat him alive, which must have been ridiculous to watch from their view. Couldn't imagine. But it works, and it works at getting rid of all of them. But because matter is neither created or destroyed, I'm pretty sure that they'll be back. And you know, with the League doing this, they may have just created an entirely different monster in itself because I just don't think those Omega Titans are gone that quick. And with their victory at this moment, Luther tells Martian Manhunter that he'll be leaving the team, saying that the world is heading for entropy, not justice, which is kind of the meaning for this title anyway, Justice League, no justice. Because before when this series was announced and we were teased with the thought of these heroes who unite and sacrifice everything and unite and stand for justice, but when that group, the Justice League, when they cause something inadvertently, because it's what has to be done in order to save the day, then all of a sudden in their case, they deserve it and for them there's no justice. But even to add on top of that with the new teens being formed, because the source wall is broken and there's threats coming to the multiverse, and I'm trying not to make any Marvel references, but it's just like in Infinity War where Banner told Tony Stark, like when it's the end, it doesn't matter who you're talking to and who you're not talking to. You need to join forces with everybody that you can in order to survive. It's that simple. 
But that'll do it for this one, guys. I really just wanted to do a summary of Justice League No Justice. So one, I could finish the Dark Side video sooner, and two, so we could explore more of the tie-in topics a lot sooner. But let me know you guys' thoughts down in the comments, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.